Hello, my name is Peter Mothy, and I'm here with Trademark Capital's Hurricanes 2024 Economic Impact video. And with that, let's go straight to the, to the slides that I've prepared for us today. And let's start with our first slide. This is our introduction to this because with natural disasters such as we've had with the two hurricanes back to back impacting multiple states, there's going to be substantial economic disruption from uh, an actual economic impact to the people that were affected, but to a lot of the economic data that's used nationally to gauge how the economy is doing. Now, <clears throat> what we're gonna cover today is we're gonna cover unemployment followed by employment, supply issues, and insurance and insurance coverage. Now, let's start with the employment question. Post widespread disasters, like we've just seen, unemployment generally will increase based on the data that's released over the next month or two, maybe even three. This is obviously due to businesses that are destroyed and businesses that are damaged beyond immediate repair and therefore, if people are put out of work and therefore show up on the you know, unemployment records. And this will impact the economic news that is released uh, weekly and monthly by the federal government that drives markets and economic decisions, both at the government level and at the investor level. Historically, though, what we find is that as this, this period passes, unemployment begins to decrease again as more workers are able to go back to work and more workers are hired to do the repair work needed and the rebuilding work that's going to be needed for probably several years to come. Remember, on this particular disaster, we have natural disasters impacting infrastructure, with roads, utilities, buildings that were destroyed, towns that were destroyed in parts of North Carolina, there will be years worth of rebuilding going on after this combination disaster. Now, let's talk about supply issues. Supply issues are such that around the country today, we have ample supplies of building materials for the construction that is normally going on such as in, in the Southeast, we have one of the largest construction uh, zones in the country as people are migrating there. And so there's sufficient building materials there for the new home construction that's going on. But now we're going to need a lot more of everything, a lot more electrical material, a lot more plumbing material, a lot more concrete, roofing, windows, you name it. We're going to be taking in supplies from all over the country to try to do the rebuilding necessary. And that is going to cause some supply issues nationally, not just regionally. This, this supply need in the Southeast is going to complicate the building statistics that are released by the government for many months to come. But here's the good part is that Eventually, the supplies will catch up, and this will actually be an economic stimulus as the repair and the rebuilding goes on. So economically, in the short run, it'll be a drag. In the long term, it'll be um, a contributor to economic growth. Now, the last thing on our agenda for today is talking about insurance. I think we all know those of us who own homes and pay for homeowner uh, insurance coverage know how amazingly high insurance premiums have gotten. Now, this isn't necessarily because the insurance companies are, are struggling. In fact, property insurance companies are doing extremely well these days from a profit standpoint. Um, but nonetheless, we've seen Florida homeowners pay the highest premiums in the country by a factor of about two times over what the average American pays for homeowner insurance. Now, this is even exasperated further by the fact that 
along the coast of Florida, we've seen some homeowners go through a 400% increase in their homeowner premiums just over the last year or two. And indeed, in some parts of Florida, some parts of coastal United States, and even in fire-prone California, property owners are not able to get property insurance. Now, as noted in the lower right-hand portion of this screen, um, it's important to note that um, it is estimated that between the multiple states that were impacted by Helene and Milton, that, that about half of the homeowners and half of the business owners that suffered major damages or insurable damages were uninsured for a lot of the damages that they incurred. Now, this is, as we take a look at this, in summary form, unemployment will suffer a good bit in the, in the next one to three months, but that will largely reverse itself in the months that follow. Number two, large quantities of supplies will be hard to come by, resulting in short-term price increases nationally, but that supply issue should be uh, resolved relatively soon since um, the major manufacturers of these supplies do understand that this is an opportunity for them to run at close to capacity, if not capacity plus. Third, homeowner insurance premiums have gone up and will continue to do so. And it's going to be a real problem in high risk zones in the United States for uh, homeowners to get coverage. And in fact, I would expect to see more states get involved um, in terms of providing some sort of insurance coverage for homeowners because the private sector insurance industry will become increasingly reluctant to provide such coverage. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this few minute discussion about the economic impact of uh, the recent disasters that we've experienced here uh, in recent weeks. Uh, here at Trademark, you can contact us uh, directly or follow us on uh, trademarkcapital.com. Uh, you can follow us on X, formerly Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. If you have suggestions for future videos, don't hesitate to contact us and we'll try to provide the video in relatively short order. In the meantime, thank you for joining me today.